Okay, so I'm just checking. We're all unable to buy a house right now, right? Like, I'm not the only one who runs the numbers every single day and looks at the budget and is just like, there is no way on earth that this is potentially feasible for me. Like, I'm working with two very average incomes. They're not great incomes, but they're fine incomes. Incomes that 10 years ago probably would have meant that we could buy a house. I digress, anyway. We pay rent so that we can live somewhere because when we got out of college, we had to rent so we could theoretically save money to eventually buy a home. Except rent is so astronomical that we are actually not able to save for a home. Even still though, like we don't pay as much in rent as I know other people do. We don't live in a huge city. It's somewhat affordable, even though I still think it's ridiculous. Compared to other people, it's still affordable. Okay, so subtracting that from what we bring home a month, like yeah, there's still some money left. Except that somehow no matter what I do, because we've cut back on everything, we've cut back on groceries, eating out, we haven't actually traveled in a while. I have a freaking coffee machine at home, so I don't buy coffee out of the house. We both work from home, so we shouldn't be paying that much for gas, but yet somehow we are. I'm going through my credit card statement at the end of every month, and I'm literally spending $20 here and there. Like, there are no big purchases on this credit card. But the groceries are killing us. But we also have to eat. We can't not eat. We need to put gas in the car because sometimes we do have to go places. But like, I can't figure out where this is coming from. Like, we're not huge shoppers. We eat at home most of the time. Compared to other people my age, we do not spend money on alcohol or drugs. I don't freaking Uber Eats or Grubhub or anything. And I don't want to sound ungrateful because at the end of the month we are able to save something, right? But it's not nearly enough to save up for a down payment on a freaking house. And if we did decide to go that route, it would take us, I calculated it, like 12 years of just doing absolutely nothing with our lives. Like just staying at home, doing nothing. And I'm not willing to spend the next 12 years completely restricting myself for the dream, the possibility of a dream of getting to buy a home. Like these are the best years of my life. I want to live. Crypto family, welcome back to the channel. Aaron here from the Bitcoin Bros coming back at you with another cryptocurrency video today. And as you saw right there in that intro clip, a lot of the younger generations, some of the younger millennials, Gen Z, they're having a hard time buying a house in today's economy is because the money is broken. Maybe if she would have invested in the Bitcoin, saved in the Bitcoin standard, they would have enough money for that down payment. Bitcoin has been the best performing asset since 2009. The only option really is, is to opt out of the traditional financial system and opt into something like Bitcoin, which has had some amazing returns over the past decade. But we're going to be getting into some recent bitcoin news what's coming next for btc some technical analysis some other indicators for bitcoin here but let's go ahead and check it out this is from red capital he says the altcoin market cap approaching its first major weekly resistance red after confirming a breakout from its year-long market structure so we had this descending wedge that the altcoin market cap was playing around in it broke out now we're hitting a little bit of a resistance It'd be interesting now, if we go back down and retest this, if we break through this resistance, every time we've broken through this resistance in the past, we've had some massive runs to the upside. So something to pay attention to. Are we going to see an alt season here over the next couple of months? Normally, the alt season doesn't happen until after the halving. So that's something you want to pay attention to. Uh, but right now, it looks like we could potentially break out of this resistance zone or hit our head here and come back down. So something to pay attention to there. Then this is from Plan B. He says, see those three red Bitcoin pumps after all three halvings. Stock to flow haters want you to believe that that was random. He says that in his opinion, stock to flow will be correct again. And we will see another pump after the April 2024 halving. So you can see once we get into this red area here, Bitcoin does start to pump. We've seen that over the past three halving cycles. And after that dark blue, we're going to start to get back into red. And that color is just basically the month until the next halving. So you could see after that next halving, Bitcoin really start to pump again. That's something that everybody is excited for. We have the potential of a Bitcoin spot ETF coming very, very soon. And then something that a lot of people aren't talking about is the FASB rules. So the FASB rules are going to be changing for Bitcoin. This is a accounting standard. So I'm going to go ahead and let Michael Saylor explain to you what this means for Bitcoin. Let's check out this clip here. Long term, this is going to open the door for corporations to adopt Bitcoin as a treasury asset and create shareholder value with their balance sheets. 
I mean, the big dilemma in the market today is the magnificent seven. Seven companies are generating all the shareholder returns, and 7,000 companies are struggling to create shareholder value. MicroStrategy's secret is we're leveraging our balance sheet as well as our P&L. We've got more than $5 billion of assets on our balance sheet, and Bitcoin is growing at three or four times the cost of capital. So imagine what happens if other companies are able to use their balance sheets as assets instead of liabilities. Right now, the existing accounting, it, it favors using credit and sovereign debt, and the after-tax yield of credit isn't keeping up with cost of capital, and the result is most corporations pursue dilutive strategies of acquisitions, share of buybacks, dividends, which are taxable, and they can't really hold billions and billions of dollars of capital and beat the cost of capital and generate shareholder returns. So this FASB accounting allows you to mark up and down the asset. It allows you to, rec uh, to recognize investor gains. You know, if Berkshire Hathaway didn't have Apple, it wouldn't be a winning stock. But it's not practical for a thousand companies to hold Apple stock as a Treasury Reserve asset. It is practical for them to start buying Bitcoin, and, and FASB's accounting opens the door for that. So you can see there, this FASB accounting rule that's going to be changed is going to make it a lot easier for some of these institutions to hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet, which would mean more money flowing into BTC. And then here's a tweet from CryptoCon. He says, I don't mean to get everybody riled up, but the monthly stochastic never gets as high unless something great is about to happen for Bitcoin. And we can see here, every single time, this red arrow is shown here, which means it's at the top of this level. You can see back here in around 2013, Bitcoin blasted off. Back here in around 2017, Bitcoin blasted off. 2021, the same thing. Now we're seeing that same red arrow get shown there. Could we see Bitcoin have some massive blasts off like it did after the past couple of times? Definitely not out of the cars, especially with the spot Bitcoin ETF coming very, very soon. So that's something to pay attention to there. And then I just want to wrap up today's video looking at Glassnode, looking at some on-chain data. And this is something that I found pretty interesting. This is the percent addresses in profit for Bitcoin. And you can see every single time it gets in this level up here, it actually is kind of calling the Bitcoin local top. So we can see that during bull runs, it does stay up here towards the high part. And you can see right now we're currently at around 81% of addresses in profit. But during bull runs, we can see we get as high as 99% of addresses in profit. And that is definitely a local top indicator. But right now we're just sitting at around 81%. So still around 20% of addresses that have invested in Bitcoin are not in profit. So that does just go to show you as well, we've come down over 50% from the all-time high of $70,000, currently sitting at around $35,000. And only 20% of addresses are actually not in profit. It's actually 19% of addresses. So that just goes to show you if you continue to dollar cost average into Bitcoin over the long term, you will be in profit. That's historically what has happened in Bitcoin's price. And also just checking out the hash rate, it is hitting new all-time highs. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this hash rate after the next halving when that reward gets cut in half. If we start to see some miners go offline, you know, it's going to really be dependent upon the price of Bitcoin at that time. But it's something that is going to be interesting to see how it plays out in this hash rate chart. If it just continues to go up and up and up forever or if the hash rate starts to level off, it's something we'll be paying attention to on the channel and keep you guys updated with. And then just going through the addresses with a non-zero balance for Bitcoin, we can see it did actually start to go down here over the past couple of months. But it has ticked up since the price of Bitcoin has ticked up here. Let me zoom in a little bit here over the past two years. You can see we're starting to go back up, getting more wallets back online there. And then if we go to addresses with a balance of greater than 0.1 Bitcoin, that's kind of stayed steady, but we're seeing a slight tick up after the Bitcoin price has gone up to 35,000. This is addresses with balance greater than one. Uh, that's kind of been steady there, gone down a bit. This is a balance greater than 10, starting to tick back up here a little bit after having a pretty big drop off here earlier in October. Then addresses with a balance of greater than 100. Uh, looks like the whales are accumulating here. So the whales are 
picking up more Bitcoin. There's more wallet addresses with over 100 Bitcoin in them. Then if we look at 1,000, uh, not much movement here. They've actually been selling off here this basically an entire year, staying pretty steady in 2023, but selling off since 2022. And then addresses with balance greater than 10K, that's the big whales. Uh, not a lot of movement there. So just interesting to look at some of the on-chain data. Let me know what you guys think about all that in the comment section below. And that's really all I had to share with you guys here in today's video. It does seem like something massive is coming for Bitcoin with a spot Bitcoin ETF. You got the FASB accounting rules that are going to be changing. Then you also have the Bitcoin halving next year. Just a lot coming for Bitcoin very, very soon. So Put your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you found any value, make sure to hit that like button. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.